On my way here tonight, I kept thinking it can't be 50 years. It just can't be 50 years. Then I walked in and looked at all of our faces and I said, God, it's been 50 years. <laughs> it was our own Paul Malik last night who said, reminded me that we were seniors then, we're seniors now. <laughs> And that we now are our grandparents and our great-grandparents. Yep. How did this happen overnight? <laughs> I've been involved with the technology business my whole life, since I started building crystal radios and Cub Scouts in Jewett City. And I'm awed and overwhelmed by the changes that's happened over the last 50 years. I'd like to take a couple of minutes to kind of just reflect on it. What's happened over the past five decades? Back then, when we were in high school, social media was the purple pages of mimeograph paper in the genome. That's true. Some of us still had one telephone in one place in our home, and it wasn't anywhere near a computer. Computers back then were Univax and ENIACs, and places like MIT and the Pentagon had them, and we weren't sure what they did. We took a lot of black and white photos, and then we had to take the film down to Rooks or the corner drugstore somewhere and wait about a week and it would come back and it'd be nice. Some of them wouldn't turn out. Now we can just, and there it is. Um, we can take gorgeous color video of this reunion and just immediately post it on the web and a million people could see it on Facebook, a billion people could see it on Facebook and it could be seen around the world in the next couple of minutes. It's pretty amazing. We did have digital texting 50 years ago. I can still remember watching our own Steve Tripp pounding his ham radio Morse code key with his digit, writing down each letter to form the words of an incoming message. He was our own GHS pioneer of digital texting. As I was pondering our 60 years, it took me all of 30 seconds to Google things that happened back there. Who would have think that 50 years ago we'd be Googling today and it would be a nice thing to do. <laughs> First class postage stamps were four cents. Now, of course, email and texting keeps us in touch much faster. Payphone, a local call, now it's, it was then 10 cents, and now we can call people uh, around the globe with you know, one of our smartphones and do a lot more with it, too. Daily newspapers were 10 cents. We now pay a monthly internet access fee to read our news and it comes seemingly free. Record albums were $3. Remember vinyl records? 45 RPM records cost a dollar, but we used to get at least two, we used to get at least two songs for that dollar. Now it's one song for 99 cents. And some radio hasn't changed. Some radio hasn't changed much at all. When Steve and I were putting together the playlist for the gathering, we thought, I just thought after I came back here, we could just do it on WICH and hear all the oldies because they're still playing them. It's pretty amazing to seem to have the same playlist after five decades. Anybody heard Red Roses or a Blue Lady or Blue Moon recently? I did this afternoon. Yeah. Color TV sets were 400. Color TV sets were $400. Now we can get a color flat screen LCD TV at almost any price point between $100 and $10,000 and at any size way up to 72 inches. Pretty amazing. But no matter, but no matter what developments we have advancing technology, it's important to remember and keep in perspective the words of one of my heroes, Edward R. Morrow, who said on the first See It Now network TV broadcast in 1952 when we were all in second grade, he had some great words. He said, just because your voice can now be heard around the world, there's no reason to think that we have any more wisdom than when our, vo than when our, <laughs> than when our voices could reach only from one end of the bar to the other. I'm sure our honored guest tonight will agree with that statement, because he too brought us wisdom and knowledge 50 years ago. 
We can always learn from our elders, no matter what age we are and they are. So tonight, we are honored to have as our special guest and as a lifetime supporter, Norman Gillo and his wife, Norma. Stand up. Hey, Ed. Still stand. Okay. Ed, do you want to handle this now? No, not yet. Well, I'm half of it's back. Hello, class of 1962. Show your tie and your shirt. I like to keep the Griswold spirit going. I have my Griswold necktie on. It's getting pretty ragged, but. Also, my daughter Judy gave me the Griswold claw, you know. I, I, I don't know what it is about Griswold, but you people have something to do with that. Uh, everybody says, geez, you look great. Yeah, thank you. I, I, I'm glad I look great. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you, don't, you, you have to realize that I had the kind of a job where I never had a bad day. Yeah. Every day was a good day. There wasn't a day when I didn't want to go to work. Excuse me, nice. I'm going to move around here so I won't have my back. All right, Maureen, I, know, I see you. I got you. <laughs> Jennifer. Uh, see if she wants there never was a day when I didn't want to go to work. Even the bad days were good. I've said that many, many times. Uh, as, you, as you probably, some of you know, uh, after I retired in 19, what year was it? 1989. Yeah, 1989. Uh, a few days later, a few years later, I got involved on the Board of Education and eventually became chairman of the Board of Education. So I went from, you know, teacher, uh, my first administrative job, by the way, was director of audio-visual education. <laughs> we had one movie camera, one movie, ca one movie projector. We had, uh, let's see, uh, I think there were six of those little microfiche things. I think that's what they call them. Uh -huh. but I don't remember. But no, we had six of those. Slide, the little uh, there was film a projector. Film strip thing. Yeah. Right? Oh, that was a microfiche. Uh, but we had something. Mm. Like, oh, we had a nice old uh, record player. Uh, it was my job as audiovisual director <laughs> to make sure that that uh, record player was down on the auditorium stage so that Miss Speculatus, I don't really remember her, but she was a music teacher, and she wanted to use that for the mass music education program we had there. <laughs> you remember, we had to go from gym class on Monday and Tuesday, or it was Tuesday and Thursday for the girls, and Monday and Wednesday for the boys, I think it was. And on Friday, everybody went to the auditorium, and she played a record. <laughs> what a wonderful program that was. <laughs> Stop and think about the music program we have today. Some of you haven't seen it, but we have at Griswold High School, the Griswold School System, one of the nicest music programs there is around. I, it's second to none as far as I'm concerned. At any rate, now how did they get off on that track? That is what I want to talk about. Uh, Your jobs. Oh, my job? Oh, the jobs. The job I had was so good. Why was it good? Because if you kids, excuse me, I'm using the word kids, and I know you're not kids anymore. We love it. The kids <laughs> at Griswold High School, when I came there in 56, I didn't intend to stay there. I had no idea that I was going to make my career at Griswold. But what happened? I fell in love with Griswold kids. I just absolutely fell in love with Griswold kids. I stood that way today. I have a problem. I think when I go by the old high school, I'm almost ready to genuflect like three times. <laughs> <laughs> At any rate, uh, I just want you to know that I am thrilled to be here, I'm glad to be here, and I want to thank you for the wonderful meal, the companionship, the memories. I remember a lot of faces, I don't remember names very well, but I remember a lot of faces. Many of you haven't changed at all. Huh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, you changed a lot. <laughs> he was one of my favorite customers in the office. <laughs> he and his buddy Woody Wilson. <laughs> Poor Mrs. Shippy, she never got over you. <laughs> uh, I'd like to just say, some of you may have some questions you'd like to ask me, and I'll answer them if I can. If you don't have any questions, that's okay too. Some people ask me about 
former teachers and mm -hmm. things like that. And if you'd like to ask a question about somebody like that, I would be glad to give you what information I have. More takers? Okay, Maureen. How, how many are in the graduating class now at, at the high school? Oh, it runs like 170, 180, I think. Oh, it's, almost yeah. it, it, it's running up there pretty, uh, pretty high, pretty close to 200. Uh, it has dropped a little bit. It was up very close to uh, uh, 210 at one time, but it's dropped a little bit uh, in the last couple of years. But other than that, it's, it's still a good kind of class. There's about 800 kids in the high school. Oh, wow. Just in four grades. Okay. Any, other, any other questions? Yes. Mr. Chilo, I've always wanted to call you Lord. <laughs> you might guess. <laughs> I had to call you Mr. Chilo. What, what do you, what, how do you feel about the Griswold High School that I go back and visit is, is now the doorstep to a wonderful complex? Well, it seems very nice to me. My grandsons go there. <laughs> so be careful. Yeah. <laughs> It, it to me is a tribute to the taxpayers, the citizens of the town of Griswold. I don't think there's another educational complex in a town our size or even maybe a little larger who have what we have. There is no one around that I, I, I visit other places around and people know me and say, gee, you look, gee, you guys got a nice campus up there, you know, and we do. But that's not the point as far as I'm concerned. What I like most about that program, about, about the, the, the campus, is the program that it, preserve, it, it presents to us. We have things happening there now that was only a dream when I was a principal. It was only a dream. Uh, now it's there, it's positive, it's difficult financially to keep it going many times. Tax, Texas, well, no question about it. Uh, I, 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 I again, thank the people of the town of Griswold for doing what they've done. They, I'm tremendously proud of the campus, but I'm tremendously more proud of the people of the town of Griswold who supplied the wherewithal to get that done. And that, to me, is very important. And this campus, this, this program, provides what it does for the youth of our community. I really wish sometimes that you people, you kids, <laughs> were able to have the same facility in, in your youth. Uh, unfortunately, time goes on, we get older, we get wiser, and we get poorer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Steve? Thank you very much. Okay, can I answer your question? Absolutely. Okay, that's all I need to know. Okay, go ahead. How old are you? I'm 82. I'm 82. Yes. Hey. I'm 82 young. That's right. I try to stay young. Anyhow, yes. Who's the principal today? Uh, a fellow by the name of Mark Frizzell. Uh, he's been, he was uh, kind of inherited the job in a way because he was vice principal for quite a long time before. I don't know, quite long. Ellen, do you remember how long he's been principal? No, I don't. Okay. Ellen, by the way, was also chairman of the board of chair lady, chairperson. I have to be correct. 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 Chairperson. Chairperson. I always went by chairman. I remember, I loved you for that it because you always insisted that you were the chairman. <laughs> okay. We old English teachers have that purity thing, you know. We, it's got to be. A chairman is a per, it's not a person, it's a position. Yeah. What do we call the president? The president does? No. <laughs> not yet. I'm sorry. Final way. Final way today. That's okay. Any other questions? Comments? Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Does everyone know what an elevator speech is? An elevator speech. Wikipedia defines it as the idea that an elevator speech should be possible to deliver the summary of what you want to tell someone. Well, that's right. I've got to go back a moment because otherwise we would have lost a lot of it. I want to acknowledge the committee that put tonight together. Jennifer Podowski Krellman. Jennifer, would you please stand up? Sandra Pedroga McCoy. Kate Krellman.
Terry Roy Craig. Doreen Southwick Elstrom. And myself, Ed Dutkowski. And a special thank you to all who didn't want to be on the committee, but still helped by sending pictures, photos, addresses, phone numbers, email addresses, and those who called, uh, people who uh, did not RSVP. And to everyone who phoned or talked to Danny Papuga to encourage him to attend tonight. And we didn't make it. And we didn't make it. Neil Manning, too, we didn't make it. Okay, elevator speech. Wikipedia defines it as the idea that it should be possible to deliver the summary of what you want to get across to someone in the time it takes to go up approximately one, uh, one floor in an elevator ride. So you have about 30 seconds to two minutes to tell your story. I'm going to give you an example, and, I'll, and I know what the time on this is. The example is, I'm Ed Ditkowski, and I've had a fascinating career in Northern California as a broadcast television and video pioneer, and as a patented inventor, and a director, writer, producer, and announcer. I have a 32-year-old daughter, Liz, who is an environmental attorney working with, with uh, wind machines. And my 35-year-old son, John, is a senior film editor on a show on Friday night at Fox called Fringe. John and his wife, Alexa, just made me the proud grand dude of my first grandchild, Lake Star, seven-month-old Dash Dutkowski. I still continue to create, shoot, direct, and produce dozens of various kinds of videos every year, and that's about 45 seconds. So, it's your turn. <laughs> we're going to pass the microphone around, and we're going to go by the order that's in the yearbook. And when it's your turn, please put the microphone right up close. Don't keep it down here and talk. It's not as effective that way. And if you know the whereabouts of any of our classmates uh, who are absent when you see their picture, please, someone stand up and tell us about them. Tell us what you know and what their story is. So, here we go. I'm going to pass the microphone now over to Jennifer and to Sandra. To Sandra, who's going to move around and start, I guess, with... Probably that we Beverly, that Marsh. <laughs> yeah, might as well. He's not. Yeah, might as well. Do you want your own time separately here? <laughs> Beverly Anderson. Hey. Ed, do you want to record all? No, no, no. I'm going to send you your own book. Thank you. It's fine. Good to see you all. Let's see, I have four sons, eight grandchildren, only one grandson, the rest of girls. I retired three years with a girl from the state of Connecticut, and I am presently working part-time. I still live in Ballantown. I'm still with Bobby Marsh. 